Well, good morning. It's a bright, sunny September day and time to start thinking about getting the greenhouse ready. Uh, by the end of September, 1st of October, we'll be starting to move some plants in and do some uh, seeding of perennials so they can grow all winter. Um, so one of the projects we have, we're a little concerned about the snow load on our roof here. And so we are going to be doing some uh, augmenting to that. And in order to do that, one of the projects I'm working on right now is I'm laying pavers down here, all along here, so that Al can come along and put some structure going up to this particular thing, just to be sure that if we have a good snowstorm, We've got some extra support for our greenhouse. We certainly don't want it to crash in. As you look around, you can see that we've got all kinds of stuff. Pots sitting here. Um, you know, stuff that I've brought in. And it's kind of a mess. So I'm going to be, in addition to that, I'm going to be uh, cleaning it up and getting it ready. One of the things I need to do is to stabilize this. Uh, I keep seeds and sundry stuff in there. I've got all the empty stuff that we, all the pots, and I'll be washing those and getting them all stacked up and ready to go. So that's kind of what September will do, is be working in the greenhouse. So what, a, do you, what do you do? Using the level to level out for the yeah, I want this, for the want this to be level for you, so that when you come in here, he's going to be put some boards that go up and across and down, and so I need to have a level, sturdy spot for your boards right. to be. So and the plan is too, the boards will sit in there through the winter, and then they can be moved out of the way when there's no slow snow load problems. Um, We've had to do that on, on, on our other greenhouse and it seemed to work pretty well. You just build a structure, move it in, set it up kind of like a, a an H frame, if you will. And it'll sit there supporting the, that ridge line. Anyway. So anyway, I've got four of them done and I'm gonna come all the way along here. And then this is not, I've had trouble getting this sturdy, so I think if I've got enough pavers left over, I'll put some here clear to the door. That's a good idea. To, to make this a little more sturdy. Yep. And other than that, I just kind of clear some things away and, and get some organization in here for winter. In addition to that, there's the continued maintenance outside. And so one of the things that we kind of have to keep our eye on is the raspberry patch because um, those raspberries keep coming up. So let's go see what Al does back there to maintain the raspberry patch. Well, here in the raspberry patch, these are the things that we're talking about right here. What happens is the plants send roots out in every direction, and whenever it feels like it, it sends up shoots like this. Well, here's one right over here, a really small one. Let me just set this hoe down. And what I normally do is I just come through like this, give it a little twist, get rid of it, turn it upside down, and it's fine. And for the biggest part, I only have to do that a time or two, and it kind of discourages the plant. However, I've been fighting with these two guys all summer. They just keep coming back more ferocious every doggone week. So I'm not just going to chop them off and try to discourage them. I'm going to have to cut them, cut them out, and that's where I use this. And I want you to notice this: this hole is a regular hole on one side, and it's a two pronger on the other side. So, depending on how deep I have to go to get them out, I'll use one or the other. And I'm going to start with the two prong deal right here. And what I do is I just uh, And normally what that does is that, that brings it up for me. And I want you to notice that I've taken quite a bit of the, of the roots out as well. So I'll kick that aside and I'll just let that go there. Now here's one right here that's just a small one. I'll just use a regular hole end on it to get rid of it. 
But over here is another one that needs to go away, so I'll use the fork end. Ah. And there's a bunch of roots right there. I'll get rid of them too and then even that over. And anyway, now there's one other thing that I need to do here, and I had it's just a continual process, and it's back here in the um, well, blackberries, I think they are. Anyway, or the boysenberries, the blackberries, right back here. They get runners that uh, just go crazy all over the place. And I just did these a week ago, and I want you to notice how long they are. And all they do is they just crawl along the ground, and, well, it makes it impossible in a very short order to walk down the, the path. So I just cut those off and then turn them into compostable material. And that's what's all over the ground here right now is stuff that we've done like that. Grab a couple of these. And it'll just go on around. I mean, it gets pretty boring for you to continually watch me uh, cut these out. I'll get rid of that guy. I want to go back and take a look at, um, we had, last year we had some beans that were, had stringers on them, stringers on them, and we, I'm not sure which kind they were. So this is a, this is Just a little experimental patch here. This is the bean called the provider. And I don't have it in our regular bean patch. I just planted some of them out here. They're getting ready to bloom pretty soon because I want to see. They, they produced a lot of beans last year, but I'm not sure whether they had strings on them or not. So I'm testing these right here to see if we want to raise those next year. Additionally, over here... If you remember, we had some um, squash be beetles that killed two of our plants. And this plant, for some reason, just has done glorious. It survived. It had beetles all over it. And so what everything. we've done here is we're saving and letting some of the this, this squash in here now mature. And we're going to save the seeds and we'll grow that, those seeds from this plant next year as our our uh, squash seeds. We'll see how that works and uh, we may even have some uh, beetle resistant seeds available for all of our viewers out we'll, there. We'll see. We'll see if we that's... We'll have to see first. You know, this is a Next project. year we'll see if, if they're really resistant right. or not. Then if you want to come down here a little bit... So I kind of use this as a little nursery here. This is a choke cherry that I was coming up around my choke cherry bushes that I dug up and I've been kind of getting it going. Here is a painted daisy uh, that I'm letting go. Over here you see I've got some grasses and some some other stuff. Some of this some is salvaged from the patio project too. Yeah, and then this is a house plant and I had divided a house plant and I just stuck this out here. Interestingly enough, this guy really likes it out here. It's done beautifully, but I'll have to take it in the house pretty soon. Uh, then I've got a few more over here, <clears throat> just some fescue and then some um, ice plant. <laughs> and they're kind of getting grown Looks in. Looks like that they? ground cover is discovering your pots over there. We'll have to yeah. dig that out before we go, go back to the greenhouse with that stuff. This, this stuff I think I'll go ahead and plant probably pretty soon. This uh, around the pond. But th that's kind of... Last year I had a whole bunch of plants here. I didn't carry as many over this summer. But most of this is left over from the patio project that we had to dig up plants. Another thing that we might take a look at is the strawberries. Do you remember some time ago, I took the runners from the strawberries and put them in some pots? Let's go to over to the strawberries and take a look and see how those are doing. 
First of all, I want to talk a little bit about this cacosmia. Um, I had it here when I had to dig some up, and it's just kind of in my berry patch. So this fall or in the spring, I'm going to dig the rest of this up and put it in another flower bed. But um, one of the things I like about the cacosmia when the blooms stop, as you can see, we still have a few little blooms there. But when the blooms stop, you have these wonderful, graceful, leftover seed, seed pod things. And I use that in flower arrangements. It just always looks real cool. Okay, getting back to the strawberries. Um, you have your nippers? No, I left oh. the strawberries over. Oh, you want my scissors? Okay, well, as you can see this here, one. Here you go, scissors. Oh, scissors, that'll work. So we can detach this one now from the mother plant. And that's looking really good. Oh yeah, now you have a plant we can move anywhere else that we want if we if we need to. And here's another one. So those look like they did really good. Let's see here. Oh, here's one that didn't work. You can see I didn't get it grounded good, so we didn't get anything in that pot. But I think overall, this was pretty successful. Oh, look at this. Yeah, you could you could probably pot up some of those others right there real quick. Yeah, too. I sure could. <clears throat> but the berry patch is looking good overall, I think. You're we right. do have some leftover leeks that probably need to come out too, so we can just get... This used to be a bed, experimental bed, and we changed it into a strawberry bed, so we still have some leftover stuff that probably should come out. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us. As you can see, it's just some maintenance uh, on the yard. Enjoy your September and fall days. They're going to be gone pretty soon. Yeah, for sure. Winter's just around the corner. Bye -bye. Take care, everybody.